Morning, morning all. Uh, thanks, thanks very much for coming, um, by the way. The reason we're here is because tomorrow uh, Fianna Fáil is using our private members' time to put forward a motion in respect of the uh, Garda Juvenile Diversion Programme. Many of you may be aware that the Diversion Programme was introduced back in 2001 under the uh, Children's Act, and the purpose of it is to try to divert uh, children who get involved in criminal activity from continuing on that path of criminal activity, provided that they accept responsibility for the crimes they've committed. Uh, and Garda Siagán have conducted a review. It started back in 2014 in respect of the Garda Diversion Programme and the Gardaí's role in it. And uh, a number of weeks ago, they produced uh, statistics and a report in respect of the programme, and it revealed some quite disturbing statistics. I suppose the one that stood out most of all is that there's approximately 7,900 offences that were committed between July 2010 and July 2017 by children, but which weren't progressed through the system at all. And that concerned some 3,500 uh, children. So it is very problematic and it's troubling that that happened and that the 7,900 crimes weren't thoroughly investigated or progressed to a conclusion. I suppose when you look at it, the, the main victims of that are the people who are the victims of the crime. There are some 7,900 victims of crime who never got justice. When you go to the Guardian and you make a complaint, you expect your criminal complaint to be investigated irrespective of whether or not it's committed by a child or not. I suppose another group that were let down were the children that do uh, cooperate with and participate in the youth diversion programme. They're part of it, but at the same time they see other people who were referred to it and nothing happened to them, so it let them down as well. But also I suppose the 3,500 children who committed the offences, they were let down too because you know it's very important that the state tries to make efforts to divert children from the path of criminality when they are children. Because if you don't get them off at between the ages of 12 and 17, the statistics show the likelihood is they're going to continue on that path uh, in the future. So our motion tomorrow is going to raise these issues. We hope to see the Minister for Justice there. I think one of the things that we're calling for, that hasn't been called for before, is that there has to be some disciplinary procedure in respect of Ngarda Siakona and the reasons why the 7,900 offences weren't progressed to a conclusion. We also think that the scheme needs to be tightened up. At present, the amount of supervision required for a child is provided for under Section 28 to be dealt with by the Juvenile Liaison Officer. We think that needs to be uh, tightened up. And as well as that, there's a proposal that's out there at present to try to centralise the Juvenile Diversion Programme. At present, it's been operated by community initiatives, community schemes, and the proposal is to bring it back in and to centralise it. And we think also that there should be a government minister either the Minister for Justice or the Minister for Children, who should have direct responsibility for this diversion program, because we believe it is very useful and it's worth protecting and it's worth trying to ensure that the problems that have been identified are ironed out. So that's the proposal in respect to the motion. Right, right. Just for you mentioned you have had no gym, you really thought for what could be done if someone's down to be at fault for any of these Well, cases. it's a matter for, obviously, Angarda Shia Khan and the senior officials in Angarda Shia Khan to determine what should be the disciplinary consequences for a guard that didn't uh, progress these referrals. But if you look at it, when a kid was apprehended by a guard and they're between the ages of 12 and 17, they should have been referred into the program. And some guard obviously made the decision not to do yeah. that. And like, unless there are disciplinary consequences for it, so there's no real downside to it. Like, we're not, there has to be disciplinary consequences. I'm not talking about severe consequences, but there has to be some disciplinary consequence for it. And Fiuk, it's worth noting as well that a substantial number of these children are now actually dead, and if they had gotten the appropriate intervention, that they are entitled to get, perhaps a lot of those lives would be saved. So it's a very serious matter and had very serious consequences for the victims of crime, but the children themselves. And it would be very important as well that Minister Sapone would attend this tomorrow night because a lot of this falls under the Children's Act. So not only should the Minister for Justice be in attendance, I think, tomorrow night, I also think the Minister for Children should be there. She has an accountability as well and she should be as part of her address to us tomorrow night. Tell us what her department is doing in response to what report was launched in the last number of weeks. Well, you talk about this period, maybe like a way of sanction, warning, maybe having yeah. some sort of success organisation look at all the cases. What are you talking about? Well, I think it is important that the Guardi superior 
leaders in Cardi are the people who are responsible for discipline. Not every piece of breach of discipline in the Cardi goes off to GSOC. GSOC is really for members of the public to make a complaint about the Cardi. But if a guard doesn't refer a case into the juvenile diversion program, there has to be some consequence in terms of a warning on the file or say that should have been done. And we're not here to try and uh, ensure that Gardaí are severely sanctioned, but there has to be a consequence for it, and no thought has been given to that as of yet. And see, the other side of this as well is this is not dealt with on Gorda Síochána. It spills into the schools, and that's where you have gangs going in and getting out of complete control. So there has to be a deterrent some way along the way that you have a, a sanction for one child and not for another. There has to be a clear measure of understanding that the early intervention and treat all equally is the only way that we can keep children on the right path. And that's what I think is really missing when you see 7,900 not included as getting any sort of intervention. Okay. Yeah, well, I'm, I've read that report uh, and I was very concerned about it. And it's sort of consistent with what right wing bullies do uh, against politicians. If you look in England, that has happened now with women in politics particularly being targeted. We saw the terrible case of Joe Cox being murdered a number of years ago. So although uh, nothing seems to have happened directly, it's a matter I'd be extremely concerned about, and I think we need to ensure that it's thoroughly investigated and uh, it's not tolerated. And I suppose irrespective of whether it is a female politician or a male politician, you know, the political system has to stand up to bullies. And if you don't stand up to bullies, you just allow them to prosper. So I condemn it absolutely, uh, Kevin, and I just think it's important it's thoroughly investigated. Do you encourage that, then would you support the restoration of guard and security for all ministers as was the case previously? Well, like the, the, the security for ministers was removed at the time of the economic crisis, and I suppose there was a purpose to that. But I have to say, when you look at what happened to uh, Joan Burton, out in Dublin West a number of years ago. I think that probably wouldn't have happened the way it did had she uh, full guard protection. I don't think we should restore guard protection to all ministers at present. It is the Taoiseach, the Connish, the Minister for Justice. But I think, uh, as this issue reveals, there has to be a review to ensure that uh, politicians aren't being threatened and that they're safe. But I suppose the good thing about our system is that politicians are very accessible. And I've never felt threatened. I don't know whether Anne or Lorraine uh, ever felt threatened in any way, but you know, in general, it's a small minority of people and we shouldn't allow them to change the way we practice our politics. Do you support the European Selection Convention? Um, <laughs> which convention? Which, uh, the Dublin, the Dublin Convention? Tyrion Brady. I'm having a discussion with a number of candidates, yeah. Who would you like to see running our constituency? Well, at the moment, we are three running in our constituency. We have the chairman of the parliamentary party, Bernard Smith. We have Neil Greeny from Donegal, and we have John Comer from Mayo. So there's a great selection there at the moment. Brendan's just after joining the race. Um, he attended um, our Gork convention last night, and it was wonderful to see him there. So the race is really on in Connacht Cluster. Who are you back? Um, the, the jury's out. <laughs> there's, still a, there's still a long campaign taking place and I think we're very, very lucky across all the constituencies that we've excellent candidates. Absolutely. They're setting out their stall very well. We're in, engaged in a lot of conversations. They're canvassing delegates and uh, it, it just shows that Fianna Fáil is alive and well and there's great competition for a nomination. Fianna Fáil candidates with only one woman so far. Is that a concern to... <coughs> yeah, it is a concern, but I have to say on the local basis, if you look at my own constituency, I'm sure you're very well of it, Vic, there are four candidates running in the local elections there, and three out of four of them are women. So like, it's hard to get people uh, interested in politics, it's hard to get people to stand. A lot of the parties say that people are standing yes. down, aren't running again. But listen, we're trying to encourage uh, more people, and in particular more women into politics. I've done it in the, my own locality. And obviously, we'll try to do it in European. Context. I wouldn't be surprised if a woman for Fianna Fáil doesn't come into the race in another constituency around the way. I'd say just watch the space. Previously, the party had specific events to encourage In relation to the local elections or the Europeans, or all both? Um, well, at the moment, the convention for the Europeans is well underway, and we hope to have it completed before the end of February. 
called for the local elections, the conventions are taking place at the moment. It's when the candidates are selected, we'll be wrapping around them and giving them every support to get them out there. And I think it's, it's very well worth noting as well that Ogre Fianna Fáil has initiated an excellent uh, women mentoring uh, programme within Ogre that a lot of young female members of the party are being mentored by, by more experienced members like Anne and I and, and been shown the rope. So we have a number of initiatives in the party to encourage female participation across all levels. I think we have a very high number of women on the or, or core of the party and a very high women involved locally. But it is certainly a challenge for all parties to encourage women to take that step and run for elected office. All right. Thanks everybody. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.